Hi there, I'm Carmen from Minerva, and if you're looking for the perfect wrap top to add to your wardrobe, then this Simplicity 8644 pattern might be just what you're looking for. I really love wrap tops because they're super comfy and they're really great for pretty much any season depending on the pattern and the fabric that you choose. And I also just feel like they're that perfect combination of casual and looks great with jeans, but also it can be dressed up and great for a special occasion. So today I'm going to be sewing up view B, which is this full length version with these beautiful drop shoulder voluminous sleeves with this gathering detail at the wrist. And really this pattern has a lot of really great sleeve options and length options. So you can really put together your perfect wrap top by mixing and matching all the design details included in this pattern. So for my wrap top today, I'm going to be using this beautiful Lady McElroy cotton lawn floral print fabric, which is really giving me some awesome spring vibes. So super excited about that. And of course, if you want to check out any of the supplies, the fabric, the pattern, anything that I use in this video, it will all be tagged down below. So you can check that out if you're interested. But let's go ahead and get started. So this pattern is available in sizes 6 through 24. And before you go ahead and cut anything out, you need to figure out what size you are. So to figure out your size, you're going to need four measurements. Your bust, waist, hip, and your back neck to waist measurements. So you're going to want to measure your bust around the largest part of your chest. Your waist is going to be measured around the smallest part of your waist. And your hip is going to be measured around the largest part of your hip, which is usually around the fullest part of your bum. So to measure your back neck to waist length, you need to start the tape at the base of your neck at the back, right where that vertebrae protrudes at the base of your neck, and then measure down to your waist along your back. And this measurement is definitely easier with a friend, so if you do have someone that can help you get that back neck to waist measurement, that is super helpful. Then you'll want to choose the size of the pattern that corresponds best to your measurements. Now that we've got everything in order with the fit, we can go ahead and cut out that shirt. So for view B, you're going to want to cut two of the bodice front, one of the bodice back cut on the fold, two of the front facing pieces, one of the back facing pieces cut on the fold, two of the right front band, two of the left front band, and two of the back band cut on the fold, two of the tie end pieces, two sleeves, two pieces of elastic cut to the right length based on the elastic guide, two peplum fronts, and one peplum back cut on the fold. First, we need to prepare the bodice front pieces by adding some stay stitching. So to do your stay stitching, stitch one half inch from the raw edge of the fabric just along the neck edge of both pieces. So that's the long unnotched side of the pieces. The stay stitching is going to help the neck edge to hold its shape and not get stretched out since it's cut on the bias. We now need to prepare the lower edge of the bodice front pieces for gathering. So to do this, find the notches along the bottom edge of the bodice front pieces, and then sew two rows of basting stitches between the notches, one at 5 8 inch from the raw edge and one 1 quarter inch further towards the edge of the fabric than the first row. Make sure that you leave long thread tails and don't backstitch on any of these rows of stitching. Once you have your basting stitches in, you can use the thread tails to gather up the fabric in between the notches. So just give it a little bit of gathering. You don't have to be too particular with it yet. Next, we need to prepare the bodice back piece in a similar way. So start by stay stitching the back neck edge. Once again, you're going to want to do your stay stitching one half inch from the raw edge. And this time you want to sew from the shoulder seams in to the center rather than sewing from one shoulder seam all the way through and out the other shoulder seam. 
Then, just like we did with the front, we're going to want to add two rows of basting stitches in between the notches on the lower edge of the bodice back. And again, your first row of basting stitches is going to be at 5 8 inch from the raw edge, and the second row will be 1 quarter inch further towards the raw edge than the first row. Then you can use those thread tails to gather up the fabric in between the notches. Now we can start sewing this top together. So first, pin the shoulder seams of the two front pieces to the shoulder seams of the back piece with right sides together, making sure that that long stay stitched edge is towards the center on both of your front pieces. Take the top to your sewing machine and stitch those shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. At this point, it's also a good idea to finish the seam allowances of the shoulder seams so that it won't fray later on. So I ran them through my serger, but you can also use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. At this point, you'll also want to press your seam allowances towards the back of the bodice. Next, cut two pieces of lightweight fusible interfacing using the front facing pattern piece, and one piece of interfacing using the back facing pattern piece. Then use your iron and follow the directions on your interfacing to apply the interfacing to the wrong side of your front facing pieces and your back facing piece. Then pin the front facing pieces to the back facing piece at the shoulder seams with the right sides together. The shoulder seams are going to be the flat side of the two front facing pieces, not the angled side. Once you have it pinned, go ahead and take it to your sewing machine and sew those shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. At this point, just like we did with the bodice front and back pieces, you're going to want to finish that seam allowance either with your serger or your zigzag stitch and then press the seam allowances towards the back. Now we need to finish that long unnotched edge on the facing. So to do this, first stitch with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance all the way along that long outer unnotched edge. Once you have that stitching in place, take the facing to your ironing board and turn the edge under to the wrong side right along that stitching and iron it in place. You'll also want to add pins to make sure that it's going to stay nice and flat. Once you have that whole edge pinned in place, take the facing to your sewing machine and stitch around that edge one more time, this time stitching with a just under 1 quarter inch seam allowance to secure your new finished edge. Next, grab the bodice and then pin the facing to the neckline edge of the bodice with the right sides together. Make sure that you match up the shoulder seams and the notches at the back of the neck while you do this. Once you have the facing pinned in place, take it to your sewing machine and sew the facing to the neckline of the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. To reduce bulk, trim the seam allowance down by half and then clip with your scissors right up to but not through the stitching around the curve at the back of the neck. You'll want to space your clips about 1 half to 1 inch apart. Press the seam allowance towards the facing all the way around the neckline edge. Then take the bodice to your sewing machine and you're going to want to understitch the facing. To do this, stitching from the right side, stitch right along the facing side of the seam attaching the facing to the bodice. So your stitching is going to go through the facing and the seam allowance, not the outer part of the shirt. This is going to help keep the facing from rolling to the outside while you're wearing the shirt. Once you have it understitched, go back to your ironing board and press the facing to the wrong side of the bodice. With the facing now pressed to the inside, we want to do one more thing to make sure that facing is not going to roll to the outside while we're wearing the shirt. So grab a hand sewing needle and some thread and put in a few stitches at the shoulder seam through the seam allowance and the facing. You want to make sure that your stitching does not go through the outside of the shirt. It's only going through the facing and the seam allowance of the shoulder seam to hold that facing in place. Repeat that process for the other shoulder seam. 
Then secure the bottom of the facing to the base of the bodice by stitching across the facing right at the bottom edge of the bodice using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the shirt inside out so that it's right sides together and pin the front to the back at the side seams. Take this to your sewing machine and stitch those side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. It's also great if you stitch the side seams twice so that you can really make sure it's going to be a strong seam. Finish your seam allowances and press the side seams towards the back. Then you can set the bodice aside for later because it is time to start working on the bands. Cut one piece of lightweight fusible interfacing from the right front band pattern piece, one from the left front band pattern piece, and one from the back band pattern piece. Then, following the instructions that came with your interfacing, apply your interfacing to the wrong side of one of the right front band pieces, one of the left front band pieces, and one of the back band pieces. Next, with right sides together, pin the interfaced right front band piece to the right hand side of the interfaced back band piece. Then stitch them together along this seam. Press the seam allowances open and then set the band pieces aside for later because it's time to start on the tie. You should have cut two tie end pieces, so for each one, fold them in half lengthwise with right sides together and pin it in place. Then stitch each tie all the way along the long pinned edge and then down one of the short sides. You'll want to leave the short side that has the dot markings on it open. Trim the sewn corners at an angle close to your stitching to reduce bulk. Then turn both tie pieces right sides out. Once you have your ties turned right sides out, take them to your ironing board and press them nice and flat. Try to focus on getting really good sharp corners. Next, with the right side facing up, pin the open end of one of the tie pieces to the notched side of the left front band piece, matching the dot markings. Pin the open end of the other tie piece to the unsewn end of the right front band piece, also matching the dots. Then use a long basting stitch to attach both tie pieces to the front band pieces. With right sides together, pin the notched end of the left front band piece to the unsewn end of the back band piece matching the notches. One of the ties will be sandwiched in between these two pieces. Then take it to your machine and stitch them together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab the bodice that you had set aside earlier and pin the edge of the band that has more notches in it right sides together with the lower edge of the bodice. Make sure to match up the side seams, the dots, as well as the notches. At this point, you can adjust the gathering stitches on the bodice to make it fit perfectly to the band. Once you have your gathering the way you want it and everything is looking good, take it to your sewing machine and stitch the band to the bottom edge of the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. If you're worried that it might not look right, do this with a basting stitch first, and then check to make sure you like how it looks, and if you like it, go back in and stitch it with a regular stitch length. 
Once you have the band attached to the bodice, take it to your ironing board and press the band away from the top, making sure to press the seam allowance towards the band. Set aside the bodice for later and grab your peplum front and peplum back pieces. With right sides together, pin the two peplum front pieces to either side of the peplum back piece matching the notches. Then stitch these two seams together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. As usual, go ahead and finish your seam allowances and press them open. Next, we need to add gathering stitches along the top edge of the peplum pieces. So to do this, sew two rows of basting stitches, one at 5 8 inch from the edge and one 1 quarter inch further towards the edge than the first row, all the way along the top edge of the peplum pieces. I find it easiest to stop right as I get to one of the side seams, cut off my thread tails, then restart again on the other side of the seam rather than sewing my basting stitches directly over those side seams because it's hard to pull the gathering through the side seams later. Make sure when you do this stitching that you leave long thread tails and do not back stitch. Now we need to hem the peplum. Start by pressing the hem towards the wrong side by 5 8 inch. Then fold the raw edge of the hem down into the fold so that it meets up with the crease and press it again. This will form a nice narrow rolled hem. Pin your folded hem in place and then repeat this folding, pressing, and pinning process to also hem the sides of the peplum. Once you have the sides and bottom of the peplum folded, pressed, and pinned in place, Take the peplum to your sewing machine and top stitch your hems in place by sewing one quarter inch from the folded edge. Make sure that your basting stitches along the top won't be caught in your stitching when you top stitch your hem. If they look like they will be caught, seam rip them back about an inch and then top stitch your hems in place. With right sides together, pin the upper edge of the peplum to the lower edge of the band attached to the bodice. Make sure that you match the side seams and the dots. The band will extend 5 8 inch past the peplum on either side. Then pull on the thread tails of your basting stitches to gather up the top edge of the peplum in between the seams so that it fits the band perfectly. Once you have your gathers evenly formed and you're happy with them, pin the whole thing in place, take it to your sewing machine, and stitch the peplum to the band with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once the peplum is attached, press the seam allowances up towards the band. We now have what's starting to really look like a top, but now we need to insert the facing over the inside of the band. So grab your uninterfaced band pieces and stitch the left front and right front band pieces to the back band piece on either side with right sides together. Once again, press your seam allowances open. Then turn the long unnotched edge of the facing pieces up by 5 8 of an inch and press. Pin the long notched edge of the band facing to the upper notched edge of the band that's sewn into the bodice, with the right side of the band facing against the wrong side of the bodice. You'll also want to pin the sides of the band facing to the sides of the band that extend past the bodice. Next, stitch the sides and top of the band facing to the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have the band facing attached to the bodice, trim the seam allowances down to about a quarter of an inch and trim the corners at an angle to reduce bulk.
flip the band facing down so that it covers the wrong side of the band and press it nice and flat. Then pin the lower pressed edge of the band facing so that it covers the seam attaching the band to the peplum. Next, grab a hand sewing needle and thread and hand sew the lower folded edge of the band facing to the seam below it. Use a slip stitch for this, which will give you nearly invisible stitches and your facing will be looking super professional. All we have left are the sleeves, so set that bodice aside for later and grab your sleeve pieces. We have one last set of gathering stitches to sew for these sleeves, so stitch two parallel rows of basting stitches along the top edge of both sleeves in between the notches. As usual, sew the first row at 5 8 inch from the raw edge and the second row 1 quarter inch further towards the raw edge than the first. Then fold each sleeve in half with right sides together, lining up the underarm seams, making sure to match the notches. Once you've got them lined up, pin these seams in place and stitch them with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Again, finish your seam allowances and press them open. Now we need to make the casings for our sleeve elastic. To do this, start by turning the lower edge of each sleeve to the inside by one and a quarter inch and pressing that flat. Then press the raw edge under by another quarter inch to hide the raw edges inside of the fold. Press this flat and pin it in place. Then sew your sleeve hems by stitching around the sleeve close to the upper folded edge, but make sure that on each sleeve you leave at least a 2 inch opening to insert the elastic through. Grab one of your cut pieces of elastic and attach a safety pin to one end. Then insert the elastic through the opening in one of the casings at the base of one of your sleeves. Make sure that you insert it safety pin end first and use the safety pin to pull the elastic slowly through the casing. Just make sure that as you do this you don't let the unpinned end of the elastic disappear into the casing. You should end up with both ends of elastic sticking out of either side of the opening left in the casing. With the ends of the elastic pulled out away from the sleeve, overlap them by a half of an inch and stitch them together with several passes of a zigzag stitch. Then pull on the elastic several times to distribute the fabric of the casing evenly around the elastic. Finally, stitch that opening in your casing closed and your first sleeve is ready to go. Then just repeat that same process to insert elastic into the second sleeve. Next, we need to insert the sleeves into the top. So turn the sleeves so that they're right sides out and turn the bodice wrong sides out. Then with right sides together, pin one of the sleeves into one of the armholes, making sure to match the underarm seams, the dots, and the notches. At this point, you can use the thread tails of your gathering stitches to gather up the fabric of the sleeve to allow it to fit into the armhole. Try to make sure to get your gathering as even as possible across the top of the sleeve. Once you're happy with how the gathering looks, pin it in place and stitch the sleeve into the armhole with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. It can sometimes help to baste the sleeve in first, make sure you like how it looks, and then go back in with a permanent stitch. For a super strong seam, stitch the sleeve seam again 1 8 inch further towards the raw edge than your first set of stitching. Then trim your seam allowances down close to the second pass of stitching. At this point, you can also finish your seam allowances with your serger or zigzag stitch. Just make sure that you stay to the outside of your first row of stitching. Then press the seam allowances towards the body of the top. Repeat that same process to insert the second sleeve into the other armhole. All we have left are finishing touches, just the buttons and buttonholes. 
So use your left front band pattern piece to mark the location of your buttonholes on the left front band piece. Once you have your buttonholes marked, just go ahead and sew your buttonholes on the markings. Finally, try on the top and based on the fit, mark the best locations for the two buttons on the right front band. Once you have the button locations marked, just go ahead and sew those buttons right onto the markings and your top is done! I am just loving this top. I absolutely love this beautiful floral fabric. It's making me feel like it's spring here even though it's actually winter here right now. And the sleeves are just so much fun. So I hope that you're feeling inspired to go out there and make your very own wrap top. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, everything that you need to create this exact same top is linked down below to make it easy for you to find. And of course, if you have any questions at all about this project, feel free to drop a comment down below and we will get back to you. Thanks for watching and happy sewing!